Hello friends and fellow collectors, welcome to probably one of the top five most anticipated videos that I have ever done, uh, giving you a little bit of context behind this and why I say that. This is the 164 scale play and collect series by Diecast Masters Caterpillar 420 XE backhoe loader. This is the first time that any scale model manufacturer has produced a Caterpillar backhoe loader in 164 scale ever. Ertl never did it, NZG never did it, nor Scott Tonkin, the list goes on. Nobody has ever produced a 164 scale cap backhoe loader. Uh, for whatever that reason may be, there are plenty of logical hypotheses as to why that reason is or, or isn't, I guess more accurately. Uh, but the point is, before we get off on a tangent, is that I'm asking you to temper your expectations. Um... This is a 164 scale play and collect series model. It is not a Highline series model. It is not a brass model. Therefore, it is not going to have the same level of detail or functionality that you are probably expecting of this based on the social media posts that I have seen, uh, the emails that I have seen, uh, and even some of the customer emails that is one of my responsibilities that I read. So I, it's sad that I have to mention that, but... I think it is pretty obvious to most of you, and I don't mean to talk to the majority of you in a condescending fashion, but I am telling you that maintain realistic expectations and understand that a lot of work went into this, and a lot of people moved the needle to an unprecedented level to make this happen for those that wanted a 164 scale backhoe. So understand that, appreciate that. Let's move on. Enough of that. This is 85765, again, part of Diecast Masters Play and Collect series line. As you can see, I have not had this out of the box. We are going to experience all of this together at the same time. It is zip-tied or twist-tied or flex-cuffed, choose any of the above. So you will have to battle that. Here is the bottom. Again, the barcode for those that are interested. The DM logo, the CAT officially licensed product logo on the back. Here's the other products in the 164 scale play and collect line currently. You will note that the 164 scale play and collect line is very different from the 164 scale mass market line. This will not be in the mass market line up of models. All right, let's get it unboxed. There's the back loader where it is attached to the packaging. So we're going to cut those in just a minute. A quick overview of the attachments before we look at them closer. There's a total of six attachments, three for the front, three for the rear. We have the bucket on the front, bucket on the rear, the uh, sweeping brush for the front, pallet forks for the front, a trench compactor or a plate compactor for the rear, and then a hydraulic impact hammer also for the rear. All right, let's pause momentarily. I'm going to cut this thing out of its packaging prison, and then we'll be able to take a closer look at it. Welcome back, everyone. Obviously, we have the back loader out of the packaging now. Let's go over some of the details that can be seen on this model. First off, I want to cover what is plastic and what is metal on it. The cab portion itself and the most of the chassis or the front part of the model is die cast. The tires are rubber. The backhoe portion here, both the arm, the stick, and the bucket is plastic, as are the front loader arms and the bucket itself. Those are all plastic pieces as well. Taking a look here, you can see that there is actually a modeled safety latch. That's that red piece. It doesn't actually function, but at least it's there. The uh, outrigger pads, they also have the black finish on it to give it the illusion that they're the, uh, the, the rubberized type that allows this machine to operate on asphalt without destroying it. You can see all the decals are decent enough. 420XE, Cat Modern Hex. There's even a warning label right here as well. The cab of the machine obviously is an enclosed cab. No doors open. The top does not come off either. Another accessory piece is the exhaust that you can see clearly on the front. The quick coupler mechanism for both the front and the back portion of the backhoe is plastic. When you are changing out attachments, be very, very careful and take your time. Underneath, here's what the base looks like. This gives you a good opportunity to see that as well as the, uh, the wheel pattern or the tread pattern which at least on the rear tires is very realistic looking and it appears to be done decently well. No steering as well. And again, we're going to transition straight into functionality now and get that out of the way. You can lift the back portion of the backhoe up to about here. The wheels will roll in either direction. If you want to operate the front, it will go up to there, which again is not bad. 
as long as it doesn't roll off the table here. And if you want to bring it down, it will go down slightly below the machine. But as you can see, because the arms are plastic, it is not strong enough to support the machine off the ground. For your curl back, the bucket will curl back to here, which is pretty respectable. And it will dump almost all the way out, which again, nothing to complain about there. I would like to have seen the cylinders be a little bit taller, uh, but still in all for a 420 series, it's not too obtrusive. Moving along to the back portion now, we'll get the table out of the way so that we can do this without it spinning around. In order to operate the rear of the backhoe, we'll drop our outriggers down. These only go down to about here. And also note that the pads, these pieces, which are supposed to pivot to be perpendicular and level with the ground, they do not. They are stuck in that position at that angle. If you want them up or the outriggers raised, they will go up to here which strangely seems to be slightly higher on this side versus this side. Back to digging. It actually has a pretty good digging angle. It can swing, since this is a center pivot backhoe, it will swing left to right, as seen here. And you can bring your stick back in or bring your stick back out. The one noticeable absence from the functionality part of the backhoe, the back portion, is that there is no curl forward or curl back angle on this bucket. It is stuck in this position. To take a closer look at all of the attachments, this is the pallet forks for the front. Again, an all plastic piece. You can see it is the same style hook over and click in that you may be familiar with on some of the 150 scale models, although it is much more uh, fragile. The other front portion is the sweeper broom seen here and the bottom portion of the broom the actual brush can spin and rotate and actually it will ro rotate when you apply pressure down there's the back portion of it for the rear we have the plate compactor seen here and then the other attachment is the hydraulic impact hammer camera died on me is the plate compactor here and the impact hammer here so the chisel point uh, is fixed on this one. Some of the other impact hammers, again, and some of the other scales you're familiar with actually are spring-loaded. This one is stationed and in position. So let's switch out one of these attachments just to show you how easy it is. Here's the front. Lift up. Take off. There's your quick coupler. You can see how it clicks on. So what, do you, what should we put on? The brush, the forks? Let's just put on the brush. Same thing in reverse. Click on and then snap over as long as you don't drop it off of the screen. There you go. And just like that. And there you go. Now we have the brush on. We'll zoom in a little bit closer so that you can see it a little bit better. There you go. There's the sweeper brush. All right. How does this look like with some other equipment? Well, let's bring out a dump truck. There it is. Thought it ran away for a minute. Be a little bit careful, put our outriggers down. You can see you can pose it loading a dump truck, which is actually quite cool. Or if you'd prefer, maybe doing some side loading. Just imagine that the sweeper is actually a brush for a minute. You can see that at least if you're using the CT660 and 164 scale, you can get up over the side. Last but not least, let's show it on a low boy trailer. In this case, I am using a green light uh, gooseneck trailer. Put this on. There we go. Sort of realistic, I guess. And then put our, our backhoe loader on as well. So I think that will be a We'll zoom out just a little bit. I think that will be a uh, positive way to display these backhoe loaders is on a trailer similar to that. Uh, obviously, you could put it on a proper low boy trailer, like a semi low boy trailer, uh, but I personally think that this is actually a pretty decent display possibility for it. That'll do it for this review. In conclusion, the 164 scale Diecast Masters Caterpillar 420XE backhoe loader does leave a lot to be desired, if we're being totally honest. 
That said, if you can accept it for what it is and what it was always designed to be, and that is a model with some functionality and some detail that uh, satisfies the uh, need for a cat back coder in 164 scale, it isn't bad for what it is. And I do believe that it is priced very, very reasonably as well. Obviously, there is plenty of room for improvement, and maybe some of the 3D designers can improve the functionality and different parts for this down the line. But I think it is worth uh, what the asking price is. You guys let me know down in the comment section below. Until next time, take care, be well. I'll see you in the next review.